tries to run past the five, so maybe he can bring the cue ball down in between the nine. And Well, he's looking at playing the combination now. Yeah, he stayed on. He, well, he got pr pretty Pr much straight in on the five or the angle the other way. He measures up the six and the nine simply because that shot plays so much easier if you've already kind of forecast it rather than get surprised when you go look at it, even though it's the same shot. Oh, isn't that the truth? You get someplace and you walk over and say, I wanted to be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or you, uh, you just thought you wanted to be there. That's why it's always important to go and, and uh, get the perspective from where your cue wall will be. Uh, on the uh, on your next object ball, very solid opening break and run out there by Al Qaeda. Picks up right where he left off last night here on the television table, playing a race to eleven. Interesting break rules here. Nine balls racked on the spot. They're playing the cue ball must be started from anywhere nine inches from the center of the head spot. Nine inches either way. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nine-inch box. And then three balls must cross the head string. For every ball that you pocket, one less ball is needed to cross the head string. And failure to do so is a breaking violation. Very good. Incoming That's player right. has the option. Yeah, it's really interesting. No push-out is allowed, and the incoming player can pass it back, or he can play it himself, depending upon the arrangement of the balls. The it might be a good safety for him to force his opponent to play again. And dry break. Oh, I thought he made one on the Well, break. then non-regulation break. Let's see, three, six. Yeah, he did. So a non-regulation break. Al Shamari has a choice here. Naturally, he's going to play because he can easily see the one ball. Speed is critical here. Coming between the seven and eight, but you want to make sure you don't mess around with the eight, nine, three at all. Or just lengthen it up. Pretty Earth. shot. Very nice. That same arrangement of the six and the nine is over there again. And it's not quite as easy because the nine's a little further from the pocket. He's eyeing that up right now. He wants to take care of uh, at least making a battle plan to deal with it. Looks like he can get breakout shape off of the three ball. Uh, perhaps the six goes past the nine. I may have misspoke because he's played this to not break it out, which is breaking out was going to be really iffy. So if you can play without having to move the ball as much, he could maybe even rub the six ball towards the rail here a little bit with his shot if he wanted. No, it wasn't there. So the six ball clearly passes in the way he's played this. Looks like a pretty tight squeeze, but who knows? You might be able to drive a truck through there. Yeah, he, he's an excellent ball pocketer, too. Wow, That's, that he relies so on that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and from our vantage point or his vantage point, he's going to have the better read on that, and you could clearly see it went in very freely. He didn't work too hard there. That was nice stroke timing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has one of those real super smooth back swings and transitions into the four swing, and that really contributes to accuracy and consistency. I wonder if he has a background in any other uh, billiard sport. Well, he certainly has a lot of snooker for him there. You see the bent elbow and the kind of the square stance. Mm -hmm. Heart of the pocket, drops the nine, ties the score up. And uh, based on these first two racks, you can kind of see how these guys got to the winner's bracket at the stage of a U.S. Open. They're, they don't miss. That's because it was an illegal break. Uh, okay, our presiding official, Carl Kantowitz, is explaining the violation. Okay, 
A lot of complexity there, Belinda. <laughs> you need to, you know, if, if we made it any more difficult, I'm not sure it solves anything other than people are sitting there bewildered. You know, right. with, <laughs> with even Carl got mistaken in a match twice oh, earlier this week, oh, and, and so next year I'd like to see these same rules in effect. Plus, it has to be a high tide in Tokyo. Right? <laughs> you know, I mean, something. Good lord. <laughs> All to um, eliminate the soft break. I, I guess. That it, uh, anyway, the wing ball, the seven found the pocket. But, well, it and doesn't matter. He scratched the anyway. Mm -hmm. No, it was a, because he made the one also. So And the six ball crossed the head string. So he did have a regulation break, right? Oh, he made the one also, I right. see. So two right. balls pocketed and one um, right. crossed the head string. Yeah. We'll keep you on your toes here. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice crowd in attendance tonight. A lot of feature matches going on the exterior tables as well. We're down to, this is a winner's bracket action. There's eight players left in the winner's bracket, which means the worst finish one of these two players could make is a ninth through 12th. Which is a great showing at the U.S. Open. <laughs> with this with, killer field. With this field. It, yeah. From what I understand, it might be the toughest field ever. Yeah, no doubt about that. And every year we say that, and every year it's true. One of the major contributing factors to uh, improving this is that the fact that Pat Fleming has engendered a lot of confidence from Asian players to come here. And so it's really helped in terms of we're starting to see the throngs of people back and well we had 148 people put up a thousand dollars to play in this nice shot there three cushions around fell really straight on the four now he's got quite a bit of latitude with how he wants to work the cue ball He's playing position on the five to get the cue ball over near the long rail to pocket the six, so it comes around naturally three cushions. Well, I take that back. He's not doing that. He had that angle if he wanted it, but he chose to go this way. If I was to be critical, I would say that that was a mistake there. Not that it's going to cost him. He's a great shooter, but now he's going to have to work hard to get the cue ball down for the eight. He could have played it over here by the long rail, back cut the six a little bit, and come around Naturally. effortlessly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now he's going to have to make a good shot. Yeah, put a lot of draw on it or zigzag. Well, it worked out perfect. Mm -hmm. But he spent you that route. You spend so much time in no man's land. It's only the last foot of travel that you even are exposed to a shot. But the other way, you got about four or five feet of latitude with right. position play. But he negotiated it well. He did. So from the break foul, Al Qaeda runs out. Leads the match two games to one. Three leads the set two games to one. We're also playing with a 40 second shot clock. Each player has one extension per rack. Something I've really noticed this week is that the presiding official um, polishes the cue ball in between racks. And I've only seen one ball skid. And oftentimes throughout these tournaments, I'll see three or four balls skid. So that's. Yeah, Towel it off, clean it up. We're playing on great equipment. This is a diamond paragon. It's beautiful. Simona's cloth, top of the line. Aramith balls. I love the legs on this table. They're so yeah. beautiful. Another tool we're playing with, as we look on al Qaeda breaking, five ball on the wing, is the uh, Predator rest or bridge 
and it's a design thing. It's not an afterthought. You know, it's, it's a really cool bridge that is very light, so if you have to stretch and reach something, you can pick it up real easy. Hmm. I really love the way the, it's engineered. I can't wait to get a couple for my home. I haven't seen them. I, have, I haven't seen them or tried them. I'm looking forward to that. al Qaeda, pocket of the ball, legal break. Ops for safety play. That's a good shot there. That's reminiscent of the Texas Bell in her heyday right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. And yeah, he got the cue ball on the end rail and got the one ball behind he, some blockers and a long he, way. He can go e either way, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, left long rail or right long rail. This is such a good safety that it's more of a matter of uh, life or death. Just hit the ball. You really can't play much of a shot. Two cushion hit. Threaded around it. And that safety play is going to earn ball in hand. So that will be rewarded. Well, it looks like they need kicking lessons in Saudi Arabia, too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at this level, it's imperative that you cash these opportunities in when you start with ball in hand. You might get one turn, but you don't get two here. Ball in hand is uh, very powerful. I uh, I uh, read a study about uh, uh, having a, a class or like a presentation and they had people come and sit in chairs that were screwed to the ground so that they had to sit right there. And they timed uh, their uh, attention span. And then they uh, had another group come in in chairs that you could actually move. And the attention span was much greater. So that people, when they feel a little bit in control, it's very powerful. So uh -huh. when you have that cue ball in hand, it's very powerful. I would bet that if you set up a table with the cue ball in place saying, shoot from here, that the player wouldn't run out as many times as if you said, here, ball in hand. Get you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Punches the cue ball on the rail, bounces out, center of the table. Both of these players are relatively fast. Don't count on the shot clock coming into play much. Perhaps on a push out after the break will be about the only time. Routine nine ball. al -Qaeda expands his lead by two. Leads three to one. He doesn't waste too much time, does he? No. These fast players. Belinda, talk a little bit about your induction tonight. I mean, you had to be looking forward to it. It's got to be the culmination of a lot of years of work, and then I know you were emotional. Well, I was uh, I was thrilled that uh, my sister did uh, the presentation, uh, being as how she knows me pretty well. <laughs> yeah. And so it was great to have family here. I had my son and my daughter, my grandson. My sister and my niece, and my husband, and uh, some other close friends, and uh, you know, when you're being honored like that, or if you win something or achieve something, it's it's really not the same if you if you don't have somebody to share it with. Mm -hmm. So I was very happy to be able to share this moment uh, with them. Two balls on the break, and just to follow up with what Belinda was saying, I got to tell you. I was kind of emotional for you, too. I mean, I was so happy that uh, I was here and able to come. It was a great ceremony and a great speech by your sister, Yvonne. Yvonne. Yvonne, uh -huh. yeah. Everybody liked it. Ivan Lee even came up to me and said, boy, is she a professional speaker or what? Actually, well, she's done TED Talks before. Okay, well, she did a great job. I was, uh, was going to say... Uh, Obviously, I thanked her, or thanked her for a good job. And I was going to say, if I had to list her achievements, we'd be here for three days. <laughs> <laughs> there wouldn't have been time in the uh, 
in the Hall of Fame uh, banquet, the time frame that was allowed for it. Al Shamari made a pretty nice hit there and from long range, but he hung it up in front of the hole, and now he seems to act by his body language that that's a straight-in shot. And it was. Oh, al Qaeda really seems to have some momentum, a little more pep in his step. You notice he tucked in his shirt there, Belinda. We're playing all ball fouls. All ball fouls. That that can that can come into play when when you can't get into your normal stance. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have to come up a little higher or whatever. It can it can definitely make you miss the ball. And it's the way to play too. You know, I mean, I, I know you you're a purist. I know you would understand and believe it. Although I uh, the pool room that I grew up in, quote unquote. Uh, you could get on the table. <laughs> the rule was yeah. one foot in the pool room. <laughs> so when I started playing tournaments, uh, I was like totally lost using a bridge, using the mechanical bridge, because I was just hopped right up on the table. Nice draw. He arced right into straight in position stop shot here. He's, he's going to cash this uh, errant safety in. That was nice. He drew it to the rail and came back off so he can put a nice, hey, nice full I, stroke on it. See what I mean by his picking up pace here, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. 4 1 is our score. Al Qaeda in front. Well, we'll see what uh, Al Samari can do to uh, change the momentum here. Mm hmm. Most of the players are going with like the two thirds uh, hit on the one ball cut and with a little bit of right English, but sometimes it gets loose and goes one rail cross side. You'll see the cue ball threaten the side pocket quite a bit. Now it gets kissed a lot of times too, but once in a while it goes through there clean. Five ball on the wing. Five balls in the pocket. Here comes the cue ball. You see how it's heading over there. And the one last misfortunate kiss, or he might have had a nice shot on the one. Here he's got a, uh, kind of a treacherous layout of balls. So the wing ball is uh, the tangent line set up for the wing ball to go, even with the nine on the spot? It's no, the, no, it's high. But when they go two thirds cut, it enters the power into the rack a little bit and lets it release. The ball right behind the wing ball releases early, and that kind of lets it drift down. It, if you catch it just right at the right speed, it will go straight in. But it'll oftentimes go down there, and balls are coming by and knock it in too. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. well, the players are are pretty resourceful. Yeah. When it comes to yeah <laughs> having to play play under different rules uh, over the years. No, that's true. And th and that's really my objection to the rules is what are they really solving? And when you add complexity, it's a problem, but also you alienate your audience. You know, that's nobody plays it like this at home, and I think we should appeal to the people that come and spend money to watch. Let them identify with what they're playing here. Well... Look at this. He's going to scratch on this ball. No. I know a lot of people don't agree with it, with this, but... I think that's what alternate the break solves. If you're making a break on the a ball on the break every time, fine, but let each player get an get an equal right. you know an equal chance at it. Um, I can understand try wanting to try and manipulate the rules so that you don't fly 1,500 miles and sit in your chair for nine racks because yeah. the corner ball is going straight in every time. But to me. As far as fair to the players, alternate break is right. is definitely the way to go. Well, Barry Behrman was old school, and he insisted that it be winter break. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this juncture, we're probably not changing that, but I do agree. I think it absolutely should be alternate the break. But it's well, fun. It, you and I grew up this way, too. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, and uh, the main argument I've heard about it is that, well, then, you know, a player can't put racks together. And I said, sure they can, just every other time. 
it's, it's even harder because right. if you're breaking your in your uh, momentum, I mean, or breaking your rhythm, yep. it's even more difficult to do that. So if someone to, were to run nine racks in a row every other time, that you know they'd really be doing something. Al Qaeda is really going to work here. I mean, he's moving fast. He just make, has to make sure he doesn't get a speed and take it. Right. Let's see if he does. Uh, comes around two rails. Off the seven. Looks like it. The shot that you wanted him to uh, right, a couple of racks right. ago. Yeah, this is really three rails. And then now he's just got a liberal area to get into speed wise. Mm -hmm. Kaidi's really going fast. I wonder if he thinks it's 40 seconds for the entire rack or he can do it every <laughs> shot here. <laughs> okay, here we go. 5-1 is our score. al Kaidi in front. And he's playing at a super high level right now. This is going to be, he's in well into the 900s, I'm certain. Do not have our Kamui statistics up yet, but we will be getting them shortly. Here we go. 975, one error. He's pocketed 39 balls, Bill. Do you remember his error? Mm, let me think. Was it a... Um, cost him the game, I'm sure. Oh, uh, was it uh, the break? That, uh, 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 yeah. That he didn't uh, qualify the break. I think so. Must have, yeah. Remember? He's at four Is out of five uh, successful breaks. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because uh, I don't remember missing a ball. No, I don't think he's missed any balls. Speaking of not missing a ball, um, Rodney Morris, the other Hall of Fame inductee, my husband and I got a chance to go to an event in uh, Raleigh a few months back. Rodney was there, and Johnny and Corey and... Uh, uh, Alex and, and several of the players and we watched three of Rodney's matches and he never missed a ball. Oh, he's playing good. He was playing so good. We have a non-regulation break here. So Al Shamari has to look at a long thin cut on the one. He's going to choose to take it but he could put his opponent back in if he found it distasteful enough. I think he's tired of watching Al Qaeda do all the shooting. Wasn't that a pretty shot? Look mm -hmm. at the power of that, too. You know, very effortlessly smooth. Beautiful. And that's after having sat for five racks, right. four racks. Right. Know? And the other guy's just absolutely pounding you, not missing a ball, playing a 975 pool. Oh, he's going to bump the eight on the wrong side here. Oh, boy, that's not what you wanted to do. You made a good Ouch. opening shot, and then they got away from you just a hair. And, you know, that, that might just be the difference in how it hit the pocket down there. You might have hit the pocket a hair thin. But anyway, he finds himself in a bad spot here. Tough ball to kick in. He's probably going to go two cushions, try to get some separation. Hit it on the low side, so he didn't get the separation. If he could have hit it on the high side, Cuba would have sailed down table a little better for him. You just don't want to leave great players close to the object balls, even if they don't have a good shot. So you think he'll go behind the nine and out for the four? Shoot the three in the side? No. Uh, the the side or? no I, Does I think it go he'll... down in the corner? I think he'll go three in the side, and he's either going to play safe. If he doesn't play offense, he's got a pretty handy safety here. Or he could try to just rub up in between the five and nine, maybe just lightly bump one of those two. Good shot. These guys take pretty conservative position routes because that contributes to consistency. And at this level, you can see how it can quickly morph into four or five games. They, they don't miss balls.
Do you know the motto of uh, Virginia? Uh, something about lovers. Very good. Yeah, Virginia is for lovers. It's for lovers. And we love pool. So we're <laughs> we're in the right state. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, he needs to smooth this one in there, and that's a smaller pocket than you might think because if you just rub the long rail on the way in, it will hang up. Oh, so he went over and back. That was that was nice. Well executed. Allowed him to let his stroke out a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, and, and make a real committed stroke on this ball. He's working hard to get the proper angle on the six now, so the cue ball will naturally transfer to the seven. And that is a deceptively good shot. You'd think, well, he didn't get that close, but he's got the perfect angle, which makes the pocketing of the ball much, much simpler. Right. Uh, proper angle is always more important than distance from the cue ball to the object ball. He hit the rail going in. Good speed there. He could have been in trouble. He had that getting the whole English on that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot. Yeah. Just a nine ball away from taking a five game lead in this match. I think it is extension out. Yeah, it was really uh, nice how he took his time on that. Mm -hmm. uh, the ball that he went over and back on. Uh, I think a lot of players make the mistake of, even when you come up on a tough shot, keeping that same rhythm mm -hmm. and uh, rather than giving it its due consideration, you know. All right. Yeah, look at that. 9.58, al -Qaeda. He's on fire. Yeah. We consider 850 a professional level, and 900 is world class, and he's well over that. Certainly when they put up the next amount of balls pocketed, that will tell the tale. Now, as long as he uh, doesn't start thinking about it. <laughs> right. Uh, he's played some matches, boy, to get in this in the circumstance that he's in. Let me just tell you what the tail of the tape is on him. He beat Donnie Mills. 11-5. Nico Sikonomopoulos, great player from Greece, Moscow League Cup candidate, 11-9. And then he beat Chu, 11-7. And he beat a very game Justin Bergman last night, 11-9. Hard fought contest. No easy matches in this nope. field. No. Nope. No, it used to be years ago we came here in the second round of the tournament, you'd be playing a professional plumber. <laughs> Those days are over with. Yeah, they are. Well, especially with the $1,000 entry fee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is he considering the bigger shot here? Al Shamari is aggressive. This would be hyper aggressive for sure. Yeah, that's what he was playing. Oh, boy. Mm. That was a well, very good gonna effort. Have a, he was going to have a billiard to a combination. And that's his game. And he, he, he makes it work. It's, it's remarkable Goodness. some of the difficulty of the shots that he plays. I was noting that last night, my first chance to look at him. He was playing some unconventional shots with 100% success. Wow. Oh, caught a little break there. No such thing as an easy combination. No. Now, on the diamond table, when those balls get deep in there, they're really uh, hazardous to play with. Hard to control the cue ball off the mm -hmm. ball so deep in it, the hole. There's the predator rest right there. I call it the bat bridge. Kind of looks like a bat. And it's very lightweight. It's a two-piece bridge. Yep. That's what makes it a hassle there. Is <laughs> it's easy to follow that in because it's so deep. And right. But check this shot out here. He's going to make this ball. <laughs> I just feel it. Because <laughs> this is his game right here. 
I'd be down there facing all kinds of trepidation and ambiguity about shooting it. You'd be completely committed to this blend. This is a hanger. Uh huh. <laughs> I'll be shooting it in the right hand pocket. Overcut, Overcut it. Overcut it. Well, because you know what? Well, or was he playing safe? He might. He was have. playing safe because he wouldn't. You know, I don't think yeah. he would have got on the floor like that. Yeah, and he, he he missed it by so much that he's too good mm -hmm. of a player to miss it by that much, so mm -hmm. you're right. Although, with the um, diminished speed, that ball's going to cut more, too, you know. The harder you shoot, the uh, less the ball cuts. Mm-hmm. And conversely. Looks like al -Qaeda's trying to play it off the other ball. He did. He played the carom off the eight. It must have been laying really well because he shot it confidently. Which is surprising that he didn't get better shape because he knew it was going, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I would say based on our uh, broadcasting his match last night, that his position play would be the only question mark about his game. His shot making is excellent. He can shoot those two rails and leave the cue ball behind the nine. Let me slow roll it, try to get behind the eight. Oh, he did a good job of it. Al Shamari now, he's looking at possibly cutting the four into the side pocket. <laughs> Can you see the, uh, oh, yep. Yep. This is, uh, this is not for the faint of heart. Don't try this at We're home, down folks. In the corner. This guy's a trained oh, professional. Oh, my goodness what gracious, what a shot. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Wow. He makes balls that other people play safe on. Well, that could just be the uh, shot to turn this match around. That one, it didn't hurt him. Both balls going. Although, he's a little bit straight on the seven. If he just stays in that general area, he'll have to come around three rails for the nine in the same pocket as the eight. That's always a tricky little shot with tight pockets. Mm -hmm. Particularly with some distance on it. Mm-hmm. He so he's going to go over and yeah. back, yeah. He drew back to get a little thinner so he wouldn't have to make a big, long swing. Right. That was a pretty heady play. Just a little left on this, center left, and over and back. And he settled into the shot, didn't like it. I changed his bridge. I like that idea. He got back up, stood up. Oh, see why he didn't. And, you know, uh, even after he hit it and even after it wiggled its way home, he was still down in the stance. He, he didn't jump up. He, he gave the shot uh, due respect and quality effort on the stroke technique. Nine ball down the rail now. Perfect. No loss of focus. <laughs> Al Shamari gets on the board again. All from that, all, I'm sorry, all no, from that no. shot in the side pocket that he went for. Yeah. And made. That's his game, and like you said, it might be the shot to turn around. Al Shamari two, Al Qaeda six. We really haven't seen him break uh, more than once or twice or once. I don't even remember how he's been doing on his break. Well, he lost a leg, so this will be the second time we get to see his break. All right, Abdullah Al Shamari breaking now. Two thirds hit on the head ball. Legal break. He got it kissed in.
I don't know that you've seen this player play, but I'm going to explain it to you. Her name is Jessica Santina from the Philippines. 17 years old, turned 18 while she was here, mm -hmm. won several matches. Oh, played in this event. Yes. Excellent. Plays great. She will be a serious force on the WBBA tour. Like a guy young Kim at mm -hmm. 18. Yeah, yes. that kind of player. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. She beat Donnie Mills. Oh, my goodness. Well, yeah, so wow. don't think she can't play. Wow. Well, how about Karen Core? Yeah. She did oh. so well here uh, last year. Yeah. And then uh, was runner-up at Turningstown earlier this and year. And then won a good, like, a Joss Tour event the week after. Oh, yeah, I mean, against a lot of those same players. So, yeah. That really helps the sport out, too. When, mm -hmm. when uh, Jessica plays here, I mean, it gets a big crowd around her table. Oh, I'm sure. As long as the uh, women have been playing and playing well, it's it it's still a novelty, you know, particularly uh, in men's events. Mm-hmm. That's nothing but good for the sport. Ball in hand, Al-Qaeda tried to kick hard so he could get some separation and took a little extra risk. Barely missed the one. All the uh, men spectators are saying, boy, I'm glad that's not me. <laughs> I, you know, that used to be the case in the 80s, but I think nowadays people kind of understand that, uh, that the top women players can win a match any time against anyone. That's true. Once your certain skill level... Um, any, you know, mm -hmm. any player can beat any player. Yeah, and I don't think the chauvinism is, is quite as significant as it once was. I, I was never that way, but I do remember there was a lot of that. That's petty jealousy, I don't know, it was stupid. But it certainly helped us with the media exposure when Belukas played on the men's tour. Mm -hmm. That's what I remember. Shamari now working his way through this rack, making use of ball in hand. I like his little paws. Mm-hmm. No, he has real good technique. Gets through there straight, and even on the testy shots, stays down and stays still. So when you see him shooting tough shots, look for that. You'll, you'll see his calling card. That contributes to great accuracy. Here I come, he says. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there's no quit in these guys. Beautiful. Yeah, he's definitely got a snooker background. Very good. Al Shamari capitalizes on ball in hand. Picks up his third win. Trails in the match three games to six. Timeout, Mr. Al well, we're going to have a quick timeout. Belinda and I will rejoin you here momentarily. Okay, everybody, we're back. Score 6 3. Al Shamar trailing and breaking. Eight ball on the wing. Kissed into a scratch, just what he didn't want to see. Mm -hmm. Wasn't quite as focused of a shot, though, was it? Did, did you think? Um, it, it, he didn't take as much time as he had he, been on the yeah. thing. Yeah. It wasn't an effective break. Uh, of course, you never want to scratch on the break. It's unfortunate because he had some momentum built up and was looking forward to continuing that. And uh, that just kills every bit of momentum that you have uh, were able to build up. Pool is such a tough game, and you certainly don't want to commit unforced errors at this level. You're going to have some occur anyway. Right. Very fickle nine ball. Open layout like this. He, he's probably, you know, 80% to win this game from right here, would you say? Uh-oh, definitely. 
All right. And then he's going to have the break. And so um, these guys can break and run out somewhere between 25, 30% on average. So it can easily morph into 1.25 games. And then they make a ball on the break and play safe. And then you're kicking for your life, which means it can expand into three or four games for one unforced error. You know, it's, right. it's not just one game on average. No. It usually always costs you two games. And it takes you have to be fit to play in this because of the degree of focus you have to maintain throughout the match. And then you have to be withstanding, you know, uh, some serious adversity. He had to get exactly perfect on that two ball to follow up for the three there on, on that side of the table. That's just just beautiful. Yeah, he, he came in just a little short of where he would like to be, but he's okay. It just means he's going to focus a little harder. They control the speed. The cue ball is going to want to be hot when he cuts it thin. Yeah, you don't want to guide this ball. You have to stroke that ball. Yeah, and the combination of extreme low with some side spin was able to check up the speed and bring him back into position. Stunned it forward. That makes the rest of the rack play quite a bit easier. He could have played it in the same pocket he shot the um, previous four ball in. But this side of the table makes it play a bit easier. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. he bit into that one a little more than he wanted, didn't he? Mm -hmm. These tables are play pretty fast, brand new cloth. Uh, I thought that one might roll, take another half ball turn. But... Uh, as well. Well, the price for the scratch and the break is going to be at least one game. Al Qaeda now has seven. Al Shamari three. David Al Qaeda wins rack number ten. He leads the match seven games to three. And he's been breaking well. Mm hmm. He's been doing everything well. He's over 900, 903 right now on the. AccuStats statistics provided by Kamui. Al Shamari 737. That scratch on the right really hurt his. Uh... Yeah. You know what's most interesting, too, is in these matches, irrespective of what the score is or the statistics, just tell me who made the most total balls, period. Don't tell me anything else. The person with the greater number wins um, 95, 90%, something like that. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, so it's just like with straight pull, bank pull, eight ball. Whoever makes the most balls wins, period. Wing ball went in, found the pocket. It's going to be a legal break. <laughs> He's got another thin cut. That one ball keeps settling on the back rail. to make sure he doesn't scratch off the back of the two. Mark, you think he's just going to cross this and play safe? I don't know. I think he's considering playing offense here. He's pretty effective. It's not a real easy safety. Cause, uh, like you've tried to tuck the cue ball underneath the two, it's so likely that you can scratch. I think if you're going to try to play safe, I think you use a, a low and stop and just cut the ball to your left and try to have it hit this long rail just short of the side pocket and have come down here behind the three if you can. These guys kind of default towards offense. He's playing the safety. How did he do? I think he left a shot. Mm -hmm. Given that same circumstance, Alstromari shoots at the one ball there. Yeah, he does. Right, right, right. And he makes the great preponderance of him. This is basically the same shot that Al Qaeda had. And there's some issues. There's some clutter here. Hit it heavy. <laughs> Hello, seven ball. Got right in the way. Now, Al Qaeda is really handy with the jump cue. We saw that in yesterday's match. I was watching him during uh, warm-ups, and he 
He shot a couple. And the, the two balls so close to the pocket that as long as you don't get hooked, well, even if you do, you jump another one. <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. Oh. He hit a I little think fall, he, I yeah, think. Yeah. He caught a little fall in the center ball stun on the jump. Caused it to stick. The only place he didn't want to be. Right. Uh, he's examining. He's asking if he has an extension, I believe. He looked over to his opponent and Ken. If you notice, okay, he's used his extension according to the the scorp table. Oh, what a good shot that wow, was, Bill. Wow, what a good shot that was. You see next to his uh, chair, there's a box that has a red and a green mm -hmm. button on there. Okay, so it's indicating that he's used that. Uh, I, although I don't remember him using it. But. Well, on the one ball, maybe. Okay, maybe. Got the speed on that one better than the last time he tried to. Yeah, he had moved safe. both balls quite a mm -hmm. bit. That was a good shot. Mm -hmm. Al Shamari <laughs> withdrawing his predator jump cue, it looks like. This three ball's kind of close to the rail. I have to be careful not to jump off the table. That was nice. Yeah, he didn't waste any time either. That was just one stroke and go. Mm -hmm. And he was aiming at the right side of the ball also to, I mean, he wanted to separate them. Looks like you can see a piece of this three. Well, he's checking in. He seems like he wants to go past the eight into the corner pocket. And he's going to use, he's introducing a little low and a little bit of the right hand English. Oh, he was purposely overcutting that. Good shot. Very heady play. Didn't take just part of a pocket there in, in an effort to eliminate an un, uh, unforced error. Uh, that's winning pool. Very nice. Yeah, good execution, good decision. The uh, object ball is right at a diamond, so I say he hits this ball. No, oh, he went way long. You know. Mm -hmm. There are diamonds on the table. There's no reason a player hadn't taken the uh, time to to figure out which ones connect to which ones, you know. But once again, Al Qaeda comes to the table and starts his inning with ball in hand. That's the recipe for disaster because he's capitalized just about every time in this mm -hmm. match, and he's had it quite a few times. Don't mm -hmm. you agree? Mm-hmm. Now, he's earned it with some stellar safety play like he did in this rack and a couple other racks. But again, if you, you've you got to hit the ball. You've got to hit the ball, even mm -hmm. if you sell out, you know, right. okay. But uh, just giving your opponent ball in hand, that's instant death. Yep, that's going to be a kicking error that's going to cost at least one one game. 8-3 is our scorer. David al in front. Well, I still question uh, Al-Shamari taking that break after he'd won, uh, you know, a couple games in a row. And was it, what, 6-3? It was 6-1, and he came back 6-2, 6-3, his break. And then... Uh, Scratch came back from the break uh, and as you said wasn't quite as focused on that break shot committed the error and, and here we are 7-3 yeah scratched on the break and al Qaeda run out and then here you know played a good safety mm -hmm. 
Dennis Arcudio on table number two. You know, I will say this, is that when you have the firepower of Al Shamari and most of the people that you play against, you can you can maybe kind of get away with not becoming a real good kicker and give the, an inning away because you just overpower them with firepower. So you give a couple games away. But at this level, you cannot be turning the table over with the unforced errors. Absolutely not. But shooters sometimes they get a little sloppy on some of the tactical side of the game. Uh, actually, I was uh, fortunate enough to go to the uh, Moscone Cup this year, and I noticed that uh, the uh, Euro the Europeans didn't shoot any better than our players, but they uh, they created errors, uh, kicking errors uh, on the American players. So, it, like you say, if you give up ball in hand, it's, it's, it's tough to win. Yeah, you hit it right on the head. We had a nine more kicking errors than Team Europe did. And with that ball in hand, you can Figure 1.2 games lost, and then we had some. We had an uh, additional four or five safety errors that they didn't have, so we lost by 14 racks total. Well, there's there you go. There you go. Uh, that was that was it. Yeah. We we outbroke them, and we broke and ran out more than they did. So. That pesky one ball again. Yeah, it's been there <laughs> quite a bit this match. Now, I noticed uh, their random racking, right? There's a different mm -hmm. configuration each mm -hmm. time. Five balls been the corner ball, the seven, the eight. That's good. I, I, uh, I like the random racking, particularly, you know, using the a rack that gives you a perfect rack because the balls do tend to go to the same places. But um, when when it's alternate the break, I think you need to give each player the same rack and then switch it up. Well, he missed it on the pro side. He overcut the ball. Most amateurs miss that on the heavy side. And we know Alshamar is going for this combination. We know. <laughs> he is here to shoot. He didn't come to Norfolk from uh, Saudi Arabia to play safe. <laughs> I like going into the rail first and mm -hmm. making the four off the rail. And plus, it brings the one, one ball, ball out. Up, mm -hmm. yeah, up in front of the corner. Well, he just went purely right Pure. at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a shooter for sure. Wow. Well, Akadi uh, made an error. Let's see if Alshamari takes advantage of it. Although I can see up eight to three, you know, he. He felt like he could go for that ball. Yeah, this is just a, it's typical. When you're trailing, every angle is awkward. <laughs> yeah, there's clutter, it's close call, I don't know. <laughs> you have to get on oh, the side of the ball. Not, not going to be good. He's in trouble. And we'll find out his jumping ability down the rail here. He's got to clear the edge of the nine and then hit the, the five ball fairly lightly. So this is kind of delicate because you can't just hop with a reckless abandon. You hop off the table after you because you're not losing much energy on the five. 
but you have to hit hard enough to make sure you clear the nine. So it gives you that little impetus to hit a little too hard sometimes to get your adrenaline's up. Yeah, that's a severe angle. He hit it pretty darn yeah, well. Yep. He wasn't going to necessarily like his necessarily like his shot on the six <laughs> being no. uh, jacked up on the nine ball. No. You think he'll go rail first here? I think he might, just simply because, like you said, he's jacked up, and he doesn't want to just lay it on the rail down there. Five balls close enough to go rail first. Mm -hmm. Good call, Belinda. Well, you could tell uh, Alshamari didn't like that shot on the two, knowing that uh, there was danger ahead. Mm -hmm. Thus far, this match hasn't had a whole lot of play back and forth like we've seen some of the matches out here where there's kick safes and kick re-safe returns. This has been pretty much just play a good safety, get ball in hand, run out. this was baseball, it'd be a little bit more like a eight to seven game. And that, I kind of like the two to nothing pitchers duel. Mm -hmm. Al-Qaeda now has nine on his side of the ledger. Nine, three. He's right at 900 here too. That's exceptionally good play. Excellent. Excellent. Like you say, world class is 850, did you say? No, that's Pro level. Pro level. Okay. World class, class is 900. 900. Yep. And when you do that, here, here's the ball's pocket. 72. He's made eight errors. Now you get to 900. You add that uh, 72 and 8 together, and then you divide it back into 72. 80 into 72. 667. No, this is break total. Oh, Nine, oh. 900 was the figure. Now he's... Gotcha. Total breaks. He's had six successful out of nine. Pretty good rate. Wing ball went in. It's going to be a regulation break. But the one ball on the opposite end of the table. Hmm. Didn't go quite in the same place, so he was, I think he was trying something different there. Well, I think he's going to play the old Dixie Whistler, which is a straight back bank, because it comes with position, unless he's going to cut the one back into the two and try to get the cue ball along. That's what I like. Very well executed. Total control of the one ball. Didn't like to get the cue ball down here. Good job. Keeps the pressure on. You can just about, uh, well, he's getting this jump cue. Mm. Hit the edge of the one, legal. Almost got lucky. Yeah, I think he left a shot. Mm-hmm. Heidi has so much momentum now. Really tough to slow him down. He feels totally comfortable at the table. He's the, the preponderance of the shooting. That's going to be good speed there. I can say, let's check out this speed. Yeah, yeah. A little thinner than he really wanted, but uh, certainly imminently doable for him. Mm -hmm. He had room for about another eight inches. Overcut a little bit, so. I always say you know you're playing good when you almost missed. You know, as opposed to almost made it. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't angled to where the seven didn't come into play.
little left hand spin, two cushions back around near the center of the table. Here for the you want it to be. And clear the nine. Left trailing out. Got a little straight. He can draw back with the inside and bounce off the rail. Yep. Just like you called it. Picked up a little bit the wrong angle, but got plenty of leeway here to get position. Yeah, I think uh, trying to get uh, right. above the ball would have been... In other words... No, you can get this angle, just go down and back for the nine. Uh, Boy, good speed there. Mm -hmm. Laid it in there. And he's taking advantage of every little opening he gets. He now has 10. Al Shamari going to have to win eight in a row here to stop David Al Qaeda from moving on. On the hill. Playing a 9 10. Accustat. Boy, what a good match he's played. Mm -hmm. But, of course, Al Shamari's given him, you know, the opportunities. He has. And he's made a lot of his own, too. He has. He's played some great safeties. Al Shamari has not been blessed with much luck in terms of uh, hitting balls and then having him turn out safe, which happens quite a bit of the time. He's almost always left some type of a shot. Six ball on the wing. Let's see where the one ball goes this time. Six ball just goes right in. One ball goes right to his <laughs> regimented place. But the one got a kiss that time. I mean, the key ball got a kiss that time, and he's got a better shot at it this time. Plus, he's got somewhat of window to go down and back between the four and five and, and back up on the other side of the five. Mm, that's pretty thin. It's looking at possibly going in between the four and eight, coming down to the end rail, but that's not easy either. This is a mid-range shot, and uh, it's certainly makeable, but you hate to play a mid-range shot that's... Uh, Pretty makeable when you don't have any assurance of position. Good, good heady play there. Rail mm -hmm. first, kick safe, get some distance. Now the Tied three up the ties three. up. Yeah, mm -hmm. that worked out great. That was an unplanned occurrence, but nevertheless, it certainly helps the Al Qaeda camp. And the uh, eight balls blocking the. So, you know, kicking one rail behind the one to hit the side rail to come up to the middle. Oh, good point. Of the short rail. He's a shooter. He was going oh after the goodness. nine as well. Oh, my goodness. Take care of the three. Shot. Yep. He's going to have to shoot the two in the corner. And that's what he's looking at. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he's a shooter. He's Just show me a ball in a pocket. He's going to shoot at a white flag and make it, make him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he makes the preponderance of them. <laughs> that is a great hit, though. I mean, you yeah. can't even criticize that. And you notice he stood back up because he, he changed it, the cueing that it was going to use on the shot which is very smart. A lot of times you walk into a shot and then decide to just shoot it a different way. Well, you can't do it. You have to walk in with the cueing that mm -hmm. you've predetermined. Yeah, any of that pre-shot routine consistency just aids everything. And it takes discipline to get up off your ball and change it like that. I used to think it was a sign of weakness to get up off the ball. Little did I know it was a sign of intelligence. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great jump shot there by Al Qaeda, and he picked that perfect position. What's that Danny says? The balls know who's the balls know who's winning. <laughs> yeah. Among other things. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, did he get a little speeding ticket there, Mark? Yeah, he was a little fast, and he came up short. He, there's no reason to be short. You could go another two feet and still be okay. Short was tough. You could go well long. Now he's going to back out into the side. Mm. Uh, he kind of jumped up out of that. He didn't like it. Well, he went into the far rail and... Uh, these side pockets are pretty tough on diamond tables. Hmm. Let's see if it cost them. You ever heard the line, uh, put the dog to sleep? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it kind of comes into play here because Al Shamari has uh, taken the, absorbed a heck of a beating, so to shoot now... And, What's the worry? You know what I mean? So you kind of, you relax a little bit. Maybe you try to claw back a game or two and put a little pressure back the other way because mm -hmm. the man's not closed it out. And had the opportunity to. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, boy. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, lost his timing there, too. It was He didn't have his paws at the cue ball. He and rushed he the final backswing. Well, look at al -Qaeda. He's got a cross-side bank, and he can bigger the nine ball here play that too. Wouldn't blame him if he played it two-way shot. And even if he doesn't uh, make the nine, it stops him there for the, oh, okay, well he played he, position. He didn't mess with the nine, he just made the bank and got position. And he's he's certainly not going to slow down now. Mm -hmm. He wants to make sure he closes this out. Nice angle to slide across the table. This is match ball. Yeah, very well played match. Excellent. Any closing comments from you, Belinda? Um, well, I think uh, Al Shamari. Uh, is a very aggressive player. <laughs> yeah. No, he puts on a good show when yes, he's got he his does. game face on. I, was, I, I had never seen him play before. It was very entertaining. David uh, Alcotti played phenomenal and uh, remains in the winner's bracket. Thank you very much. This has been an AccuStats video production of World Class Billiards. We certainly want to thank our sponsors, Diamond Tables, Simona's Cloth, Aramuth Balls, Predator Cues. And special thanks to the AccuStats statistics provided by Kamui. Now, most of all, we want to thank each and every one of you for joining us tonight. That's our time for this time. Until next time, so long.
Introducing Lucasi Hybrid, a whole new level of performance and technology. A cue with a revolutionary X-Shox dampening system, eliminating vibration. G5 grip technology for enhanced traction and stability results in maximum Q control. Total sweet spot construction means unmatched power. And the zero flex point ferrule provides dead on accuracy, giving you the confidence you need in every shot. Lucasi Hybrid, the only cue that matters.